Welcome, everyone. My name is Jim Frankel. Um, thank you all for coming this afternoon. We've got a lot of people registered for the webinar. That's why I was trying to give them a few more minutes uh, to sign in, but you'll see them uh, gradually um, uh, getting on. If you can hear my voice, then you've already uh, logged into the audio portion of the webinar. Uh, and while this, I might be helping a couple of people who are, seem to be having some difficulty uh, get on. Um, this webinar is being recorded, uh, and I will be posting the video in the next uh, couple of days up to YouTube. So if you'd like to share this uh, with colleagues who may have missed today, uh, feel free uh, to do so. Um, first of all, for many of you, <coughs> this could be the first time you're in a Soundtree uh, webinar, so that uh, hopefully you, you can see just a couple of quick ground rules. Uh, if uh, if you look at the participant window, which is on the right-hand side, upper right-hand corner, uh, you'll see all the people who are in the webinar along with you. And at the bottom of that participant window, you'll see a raise your hand button. It looks like a, a, a right hand pointed up. That's the only way I'll know if you have a question if you click on that button. There are also a green check mark, uh, which if, you, if I ask a question and you want to say yes quickly, you can just click the green check mark. Um, you can also uh, click the red X for uh, if you wanted to say no, if I asked a yes or no question. And there is also an emoticon if you wanted to put on a, a, a happy face or frown or whatever, you can do that as well. <coughs> Again, the uh, webinar is being recorded, uh, and um, I'm looking forward to getting started. Uh, the last thing I'm going to show you, but I'm, not, I'm only going to start at the beginning because I want to make sure that I have the best bandwidth. Uh, is that I am able to show you video. Uh, so you should see my video in a minute or two. There I am. That's me. I'm Jim. I'm working from home today. So uh, this is my home office. Um, if I wanted to, I could keep the video running throughout and have all of you running video as well. But in order to ensure the best quality of uh, internet connection, I'm going to turn my video off so you know that I am real and I am here. I'm click turning my video off now. And uh, I'll leave it off for the remainder of the, uh, of the webinar. So now we'll get started. And what I'm going to do is share with you a, uh, a keynote presentation. So you should see your screen go uh, a shade of teal right now. And then you should see uh, my opening slide, which says 21st century professional development for educators. Um, Robin, can you raise your hand if you can see that? I just want to make sure. Okay, thank you very much, Robin. All right, so the title of today's presentation is 21st Century Professional Development for Music Educators. Uh, my name is Jim Frankel, and um, I want to give you a little bit of background knowledge about myself, what makes uh, me an expert in 21st century um, professional development. I spent 15 years as a public school music teacher in the state of New Jersey, and in those 15 years sat through countless professional development workshops that were offered by my school district, as well as um, local, state, and national conferences. And I went and did my master's degree and doctoral degree, uh, the typical graduate school route. <coughs> and in, on the other side of the coin, at, at this point in my life, I've probably done hundreds and hundreds of professional development workshops myself, both one-on-one -on -one trainings up to keynote presentations at national and international conferences. So I have the perspective of a teacher who is being professionally developed in a workshop, as well as somebody who is always delivering uh, professional development. So that's where I'm, my perspective comes from today and, and should inform the discussion. So to provide you with a session overview of what we're going to be speaking about this afternoon, the first thing we're going to take a look at is 20th century professional development models and where we've been as far as, as PD, as I will call it. Then we'll talk about or, or ask the question, what exactly are we talking about when we say 21st century professional development? I'll go over that. Then we're going to talk about advantages and disadvantages of online training. Right now, you're in, in an online training environment. And there's great stuff about it, and there's a couple of disadvantages. And we'll look at 
uh, all of them to get a kind of a balanced view. And then we're going to take a tour of the Soundtree Institute. I will give you a behind the scenes tour as well as looking at our online class, uh, our online graduate classes. We'll take a look at the class that I'm running right now that I'm actually teaching this evening, uh, as well as all the tools that we utilize and, and we think are really great ways for music educators to get um, training online. If at any time you have a question, just raise your hand. You click on the raise your hand button. I will come out of this presentation and back into the uh, meeting center to answer your questions. So when we talk about 20th century professional development, I found this picture. It's probably a very nice gentleman and a very good trainer. But you'll notice that to his left is a transparency. And if you look very carefully at his screen, there are lots and lots of words. He's reading from notes. He's got a, a, a lapel mic going. And he's probably going to spend six or to six and a half hours talking to a room full of teachers. And this is kind of tongue in cheek, who, who may look a little bit like this. And I don't know anything about uh, your professional development experiences in the past, but I know, speaking from my own personal experience, that um, I don't, I never really enjoyed the everyone sitting in an auditorium with one person up on stage doing six hours of professional development or even an hour or two of professional development especially when the workshops are not geared specifically towards music educators. And uh, in schools today, uh, I would say that the vast majority of professional development workshops are intended for the masses and not for, the, uh, for each individual subject area. It has a lot to do with cost and logistics and trying to find enough presenters to split everybody up into content area specific. Um, so I, I use this as kind of a tongue-in-cheek, but I can remember many professional development uh, workshops where we felt like this uh, and, and probably weren't paying 100% attention. I think those of you uh, on the webinar who, are, who have been teaching for a long time know that teachers can be a very tough audience uh, for uh, trainers and staff developers, especially uh, on a day when they don't have students and they're sitting there for six hours in a chair. Okay, so with that in mind, we're going to look at what are our current models of professional development, specifically for us as music educators. And the first one most common is that almost every school district in America provides their staff with staff development days, whether they're called superintendent's conference, uh, teacher's conference, whatever they call it. <clears throat> Usually the day before or a couple of days before the school year begins, and then on holidays like Columbus Day, uh, President's Day, Election Day throughout the year, uh, school districts will provide professional development workshops for their staff. I don't think it's too much of a stretch to say that often the topics have little or no relevance to music educators. I can't tell you how many times I went to a bloodborne pathogens training, which, while necessary, when you've been through bloodborne pathogens 15 times in your career, you could probably do the presentation for the presenter. I've also sat through reading uh, workshops, workshops on how to teach reading, workshops on, on best practices in mathematics, and um, all kinds of um, different um, workshops that I really, I, I would always struggle to figure out why I was there. It's not the, the school district's fault, per se, for offering those. They're trying to find a, a one-size-fits-all, but it, it doesn't always work. There are also one-day content-specific workshops. These are the types of workshops that I do all the time, where a school district will pay for someone like myself or somebody, uh, you know, an expert in a certain field to come to a school and speak for an extended amount of time. Um, the disadvantage to that uh, is that they often, I, I hear from teachers, they kind of, in three hours or two and a half hours into the workshop, their brain shuts down and they basically say, I can't process any more information. This is way too much. Because that trainer, and typically I, I'm guilty of, I'm very guilty of this myself, I'm trying to pack as much information as I can into the hours that I've been provided to make sure that the school district feels like they've gotten their money's worth for my uh, time. Um, so again, while it, it's really 
great for me to go out and be and, and do those workshops, and I truly enjoy doing them. I often hear from teachers that they're overwhelmed by all of the information that has been imparted. And then um, what usually happens, sorry, what usually happens <coughs> is that a week or two later, they've, um, they've, they've forgotten a lot of what I've talked about. Um, the third option uh, is attending conferences, whether this is your local state uh, music educators or a county music educator association or a national conference. Um, I have been attending conferences since I graduated high school, freshman year of college. I started um, attending conferences, and I always found them to be really rewarding. But I think that everyone will agree that conferences are expensive to attend. They might be very worthwhile, but in a kind of a, an economy where school districts are cutting back and cutting back on reimbursing teachers for travel and for conference expenses, and then that onus is put on the teacher themselves, who has probably their own financial constraints on a teacher's salary. Uh, attending conferences is expensive, and, and it's also difficult to get the release time, because in my last couple of years, my school district would say, well, not only can we not pay for your conference, but you're going to have to pay for the sub. Um, so, you know, that, you know, when a school has, district has to pay $100 to put a substitute in your room the whole day, that's another reason for them not allowing you or giving you the release time. Another option is graduate courses. And I've, I've taken, you know, hundreds of credits beyond my uh, bachelor's degree. And I think everyone will agree that graduate courses are often expensive. Uh, though it's a great way to advance on the salary guide. I will admit that I got my master's degree um, in, in person, you know, there were personal reasons, but also I looked at the salary guide and saw how much more people were making on the master's step of the guide. So there's definitely incentive um, to go to a graduate course with very expensive outlay of cash. And I don't know too many districts that are paying over 50% reimbursement of tuition. Uh, at my school district, it was $850 a year reimbursement for graduate courses total. And I went to Teachers College, Columbia University, where that wouldn't even pay for one class. Um, and because music educators, in my opinion, are the busiest people on the planet, many of them are teaching private lessons after school or directing out of school ensembles, or they're making music themselves it's often very difficult to fit graduate courses in <coughs> to an already busy schedule, especially if you're a parent on top of that. And then a way that's become, uh, that's become uh, this is more of a 21st century uh, professional development, but it's, it's, it's become more and more popular of, of late are, is what are called professional learning networks. Uh, so again, this is definitely not 20th century, but Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, a great site uh, that I helped uh, found called the musicpln.org, and blogs. I know personally that I have lots and lots of connections using these social media um, outlets to find out information about music education. Uh, and while all of them are really good, none of these are, are really good at helping you get you know, a, a clear path to professional development to help you find the exact materials you're looking for. Teachers look uh, looking for answers and training online, can be, it can be very confusing and time consuming to find relative and effective content. It's not saying that you can't find a great YouTube video here and there or some great advice on Music PLN or, or following people on Twitter. But it's very time consuming to try to get all of those, all of the training you need from a wide variety of social media outlets. Okay, so with that, what's wrong with it? What's wrong with all these, you know, this, these kind of six models of professional development that we've been using for so long? Well, as I mentioned earlier, workshops for the entire staff often waste the time of many teachers, not just music teachers. Well, that sounds probably very negative to most. <clears throat> if you are, have been teaching for a long time, I don't know too many teachers who would say that every hour of professional development they've spent uh, in workshops given by their district has been useful. Um, you know, I don't want to, I am recording this, but it, I will admit that on many occasions we were doing any, we were, we were 
filling out our lesson plan books, doing grades, checking email while these professional development workshops were going on. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of ashamed to admit it, but you know, when I would sit in a, a, a workshop on um, some kind of assertive discipline uh, in, in, in a, uh, a methodology that I just did not fit in with the way I taught, you know, and I'd sit there for six hours in an assertive discipline workshop. It's not to say that it's bad. It just I got nothing out of it, and and it was it was painful sometimes. And again, for the district, it is very difficult to find a one size fits all workshop. It's not their fault. They're trying to train a couple of hundred teachers simultaneously with one or two people. It's not an easy task, and I I do feel for um, the folks who are in charge of professional development. It, it, is an, it is not an easy task. Um, again, what do you remember two or three weeks after a workshop? So if you have an intensive one-day workshop, if you can remember one or two things a month, uh, a month beyond the workshop, you're lucky. Uh, usually, uh, and, and the workshops that I do, I always record them and send, send uh, web links and all that kind of stuff afterwards. But many times in workshops, you don't get that. And it's, it's kind of hard to remember. You write it down on your notes and you visit them a couple of weeks later and say, I have no idea what this was about. So unfortunately, uh, especially with adult learning theory, it's a use it or lose it type of thing. If, if, if you're not doing it the next day in your classroom, oftentimes uh, you forget it and it's just, uh, it's just part of uh, being a teacher and an adult. Uh, and music education specific PD opportunities are rare and I would say very rare. Where I taught in New Jersey, all the music teachers in the district would meet once every three years as a faculty, as a complete, um, you know, once every three years. And that's not an exaggeration. We were always had to meet in our own building levels uh, with, you know, large workshops. And I can, I can count on one hand the amount of times that we had a music education workshop brought to our district by our district. Um, oftentimes, we had to go out of district for those kind of opportunities. So professional development for educators, especially those who have had their master's degree for a while and they're just relying on the PD that's being offered by their school district, you know, once or twice a year, three times maximum is not really an effective model for professional development. And I put this here, it is absolutely a fact that getting professional development is expensive. Um, it doesn't always have to be, and that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. But, um, you know, bringing a trainer in for six hours is going to cost you, unless you get somebody from a neighboring district, um, you know, if you want to bring a, a national expert in, um, you're talking at least $2,000 and up for a day. And I remember we brought famous Amos, the, uh, the children's book author and, and owner of the, uh, former owner of the cookie company, we paid him $10,000 for a three-hour workshop. So um, it, it can be very, very expensive to bring live people in. And it's not because the trainers are trying to gouge uh, the districts. It's just that travel uh, in 2011 is very expensive. And so to pay those costs plus the day rate of the presenter can be almost exorbitant and, and, and out of reach. And so that's why many times a district will not because the minute they, a district says, okay, music teachers, here's your content-specific PD, then the art teachers and the phys ed teachers and the language teachers and the math teachers all want their own PD, and that can make it exponentially more expensive for a district to put on an effective day of professional development. Again, I'm not blaming the districts. It, it is a very um, difficult situation. So at this point, what I'm going to do is break out of this presentation and go back into the meeting center. So I'm, I'm going to stop sharing my presentation, and I'm going to ask you some questions. So you will see on the bottom right corner of your meeting center, I'm going to open this poll. And so this question, just to give, I want to get some uh, understanding of who's on the call. I've opened up a question, and it is, are you currently a member of the Soundtree Institute? So what I'd like you to do is click one of those answers, yes or no, and I can see that uh, um, many of you are answering. We've got seven people who haven't started yet, so if you can put in your answer, I'll just uh, open the poll for another couple of seconds. Five more people. So again, just click yes or no.
three. We can do it. Three more people. I'll give you another couple of seconds, and then I'm going to close the poll. And the reason I'm doing this, I'm going to, I'm going to close the poll now. If you didn't answer, I apologize. It's giving you a couple of seconds to finish. And so what I'm going to do now is it's still waiting for a couple of you. Uh, what I'm going to do now is, is publish those results so that you can all see it. And the reason I'm showing you this is this is a professional development tool. Um, you should be able to see the individual poll, poll resort, uh, results. And it's even got your names uh, listed as whether you're a member or not. So we have a couple of members uh, that are here today. Most of you are not. So it's kind of interesting, easy to see um, you know, how these polls work. I'm not going to share all the results with you. But I'm going to open up the second question now. And that question is, is this your first webinar? I just want to get an idea of the people who are on here. Is this their first webinar? So there's uh, six people yet to answer, five. <clears throat> and what this is great for in this online training environment, it's really interactive and it gets me a quick, uh, easy feedback and assessment to be able to tell whether or not um, A, you're paying attention, or B, uh, what the results are. So it's kind of uh, most of you, the majority, 47% have not attended a webinar before, 35% have, and 18% um, didn't answer. Uh, so now we're going to go to the third question. And that this question is more, have you taken an online class, any type of online class before, whether it's uh, through the University of Phoenix or through your, the university that you went uh, for your graduate or undergraduate degrees? Have you ever taken an online class before? OK, a couple more people set to respond, yes or no. All right, so I'm going to close that poll. It is 44% have taken an online class, 39% haven't. All right, so in this one, I'm going to give you the opportunity to write in an answer. So the question is, what do you think is the most effective form of professional development and why? So of those things that I've listed, you know, whether it's um, uh, staff development day, a, 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 a one-day workshop, graduate class, all the things that I mentioned before. Which of those do you think is the most effective uh, professional development and why? And you, you only get a couple of, I think it's 250 characters, so that might be a sentence or two. This one I'll give you a little bit more time to complete. But hopefully this gives you an idea of, of how our, our online tool and our webinars uh, can uh, provide assessment opportunities. Waiting for one more answer. <coughs> OK, there's just three more people. I don't mean to rush you. Okay, almost done. Just a couple more seconds. I have two people in progress. I can see uh, people in progress. So um, if you can finish up, that'd be wonderful. Okay, I'm going to close the poll at this point. I'm sorry if I cut you off. Oh. There's one more. OK, so I close the poll. It's going to give you a few seconds to finish up, because it sees that somebody's still working on it. Again, this is just a, a way to illustrate how online training um, can, can uh, work, with, especially with assessment and feedback. OK, so now I'm going to show the poll results. 
uh, let's do uh, with uh, I'll not do individual results, but I'll do poll results. Or I will do it. Um, okay, so a lot of people um, have uh, there's a wide variety of answers, which is kind of cool. Content specific conferences, graduate classes, uh, or collaboration via YouTube, online PD, mentoring. Depends on the subject and the activities. Very good answer. Graduate class, I guess conferences, any type that allows interaction between the presenters and the partner, uh, participants. That's the way I learn best. Conferences, but after today I may say webinars. Very good. Applied classes. So there's lots of answers here. Very good. And somebody's face to face, and I, 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 I hear that a lot. So I'm going to stop sharing now and go in back into my presentation. Um, so here we go. I just wanted to get a kind of a benchmark of where everyone is. So I'm going back into my presentation. And we are going to pick up right from here. So what am I talking about with 21st century development, professional development? Thank you so much for those responses, because some of it will inform these uh, the next couple of statements. To me, I feel that unfortunately many teachers are stuck in the 20th century model of PD, uh, and meaning that they've got to wait a long time uh, be, for a district to offer them content specific, or there's an expense in traveling um, to a uh, conference site or workshop. It's not to say that those are bad, it's just the expense behind them. With every state requiring PD hours beyond a bachelor's degree to maintain our teaching licensure, teachers are a captive audience and have had little choice in how to get their PD hours in the past. I know that in my district, uh, I taught in uh, suburban uh, northern New Jersey. Um, they said uh, for New Jersey, every teacher had to have 100 hours every five years of professional development. And my district literally said, don't worry, you know, don't freak out. We're all, we're going to give you the 20 hours a year. Don't worry. And, you know, that's all well and good. And I'm really pleased that my district did that for me, that of those 20 hours, however, I'd say 18 of them were useless. And I would rather spend my time getting trained on something that I can use in my classroom. That's my whole point about professional development. Um, and, and I believe never more so that, that professional development has never been more important. And that's specifically, and this might raise a few hackles, but it's okay, I'd like you to think about it. I, I believe that music educators are constantly having to prove our relevancy. Whether or not we need to is a different story. But to, especially with music programs being cut, music educators really need to ensure our relevancy. And in order to do that, we need 24-7 access to quality, effective, and affordable content-specific training. Not necessarily passive um, kind of searching for stuff, but we need, we need people to tell us we need it there all the time. And, and, you know, I don't think that's too much to ask for. So how, you might say. Um, first of all, let me state very clearly that I believe that technology is only a tool to help make a job or task easier to complete. So when I say the how is obviously you know, technology, it's because technology can help facilitate and help correct many of the issues that I believe 20th century PD has. And that is through online professional development, like you're experiencing right now. I know this, I did a little research, and distance learning has been around since 1728. I know that sounds crazy. Obviously, that's uh, pre-internet and pre-Al Gore, for that matter. Uh, but 1728 is when the first correspondence course um, uh, happened in Europe. Um, so people have been doing this kind of distance learning thing for a long time. Online learning began in 1996, the very first online university opened. Today, 98% of U.S. universities offer online classes. Uh, I, I don't know who the 2% are that don't, but almost every single university offers online classes. And many universities are now offering completely online degrees. A uh, perfect example is Boston University who has a completely online doctorate, as well as many uh, fantastic uh, um, universities, Duquesne University, IUPUI, I can keep going and going and going, that have 
online degrees, which have, may have some in-person requirements, but also, you know, most of it or the majority of it is online. Um, there's just, uh, there's a lot out there. <clears throat> a couple of terms to define when we speak about online professional development is an LMS, also known as a learning management system. And many of you who have taken online classes or distance learning type things are, are probably familiar with things like ClassWeb, Blackboard, Moodle, Haiku, there are many, many others. Um, but these are four that I could name off the top of my head. And what these do is allow instructors to post syllabi and post discussion questions and post grades and assignments and all those types of things. It makes an online classroom possible uh, with one of these, uh, you know, third-party applications. But many universities are uh, have have large contracts with these types of companies. Uh, video conferencing has been around for a while now. But I can't tell you how many conferences I've been to where I've seen people Skyping or iChatting as part of their presentation to bring in either a student or an expert from the other side of the country who either couldn't afford to travel or whose schedule didn't permit it. Another term to understand is what is synchronous learning versus asynchronous learning. Synchronous learning is what we're doing right now, meaning that it's live. We are interacting. Even though your phones are all on mute, simply to keep the background noise to a minimum, if at any time you want to ask a question, you can raise your hand, and I could stop the presentation, unmute your phone, and answer the question. So there is a live two-way communication happening right now. An asynchronous learning environment is where all the content is posted to a website, the assignments are already there, there is no live interaction, and you're just reading and then posting. Uh, I did take a class at the University of Phoenix um, in, in my career uh, a couple of years ago when I was going for my supervisor's certificate, and I found that that asynchronous learning environment was very intense. Uh, the amount of reading and posting I had to do was overwhelming, actually, for me. Um, so I actually, like, blended between synchronous and asynchronous learning environments. So live content mixed with content that's there all the time that you can access anytime you want. And last but not least, uh, live webinars, which is what we're doing right now. The word webinar is still not recognized by Microsoft Word as a word. Um, hopefully, in the next couple of years, they'll realize that this is a real word that's not going away. Um, but a webinar is a seminar that's held on the web, uh, and that's what we're doing right now. So what are the advantages? And again, if at any time you have a question, just raise your hand. What are the advantages and disadvantages of online training? Well, the advantages to me are tremendous. First of all, it's very convenient. I'll let you know right now that I'm sitting in my basement, um, you know, delivering this, uh, you know, this workshop today. I didn't have to fly anywhere and, and get a rental car and worry about a hotel and flight delays. I'm sitting in my basement. Um, and that, to me, is really convenient. So as a presenter, that's great. But as a person who's attending a workshop, it's great as well. Um, you could be sitting in your pajamas, for all I know, with a glass of Chardonnay while you're attending the class. It's really nice to be able to do it in your own home, especially as a busy music educator and if you're a parent on top of that. This type of uh, online training makes it doable. It's very, very affordable. Uh, in comparison, um, you know, the, for, I'll, I'll share with you Soundtree Institute pricing later, um, but, it, but um, in, uh, online training is way cheaper than bringing someone there in person. Um, I know that I've done a lot of online trainings recently at one-tenth of the cost of me being there in person. So I can do a, a two-hour workshop with 300 teachers for $250 rather than $2,000 because I had to pay for my flight, hotel, rental car, food, and, and, the, and the per diem. So it's very affordable. The content in, in an online training environment is always archived and available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So this webinar is being recorded, and it will be available to you anytime hereafter. Live webinars and live presentations, unless they're being videotaped, are kind of ethereal. It's you were in the room, and then it's over, and then you have to you only have what's in your mind's eye to remember. Uh, again, I say that a combination of synchronous and asynchronous learning 
makes an online training environment <laughs> really advantageous because you can go back later and look at the content that's there, but you can also have that one-on-one -on -one or a presenter um, a participant interaction. And last but not least, minimal equipment requirements. I am sitting here today with just my laptop. Um, I have no other equipment in front of me, and I think many of you are in the same boat. Uh, if you're on a PC, the only thing you might need is a headset microphone um, if your computer doesn't have a built-in mic. But other than that, you're set. You have everything you need to do online training. <clears throat> so it's not all rosy. What are the disadvantages? Well, there is a slight learning curve to get comfortable with the technology. Um, I'm teaching an online time course right now. In the first class, there were some bumps with people trying to figure out how do I get into the learning management system? How do I get onto the webinar? I never got that email. So there is a slight learning curve, but it's not a big one. Um, but, it's, but there is one there. I agree, as, as, as a lifetime educator, it is not exactly the same as being in the same room with the instructor, no doubt about it. And in some times, that's a good thing. But in some cases, it's like, you know what, I miss that interaction between, I want to be in the same room with the person when they're teaching me. And somebody commented on that earlier. There's no getting around that. There, is, there always has to be a trade-off. And, and I believe in the online trading environment, that's one of the very few that you need to make. Last but not least here is that there's not as much personal, personal and social interaction with other students. There's no doubt about it. Uh, the online classes that I've taken in the past, you know, five years ago, I didn't know one student in, in the class. I never met them. I didn't even know what they looked like. Uh, and that is a little off-putting to some people, especially those who, are, who, are, who thrive in a social environment. Um, but again, it's one of the trade-offs to the, all the advantages. So I wanted to make a balanced approach. It, it, there, there may be other advantages and disadvantages that I've uh, skipped over, but these are the ones that I think are the most obvious. Um, so tips for making online professional development more effective, both for you as well as if you're going to ever teach in this environment, is what I love about it is that there, there needs to be a set and fixed schedule. But you need to say, this is when the webinar is happening, or this is when our class is happening, and this is when you need to be there. If you leave it up to, yeah, just show up whenever you'd like and watch the content whenever you want, uh, I know from my own personal learning style, that much flexibility can be really bad because I'll go three weeks and say, oh, well, it's not a priority this week. And then four weeks later, uh, I have all this assignments to catch up on. So I like with online professional development having that synchronous aspect and making a set and fixed schedule. And even if you're taking a class, to say to yourself, actually, I'm going to do work for this class and schedule in the time when you're going to do it. Um, it is very important in an online class environment to use readily available content, meaning that the syllabus should be up there. All of the materials that you want to teach with should be there for people to use, download, and, and check out. Um, and that, you know, in this kind of digital environment where you, you can just post a document, you don't have to worry about photocopying or anything like that. It's very easy to do. Uh, I personally believe that, um, you know, participating in online discussion boards can be really uh, a great activity. And don't be afraid to get into it and, and argue uh, about things with, with students. I think uh, American education, in my opinion, it has a lot of, it has kind of a fear of confrontation among students. It's okay to disagree with each other. That's part of learning. And then um, you should take advantage of all the archive content for reinforcement. So, for example, um, if, if you just watched a webinar on how to do X in Finale, and then a couple of weeks later you forget, take advantage. Go back and watch that video and fast forward to the part where the instructor showed you. It's really easy to do. And last but not least, try to connect with the other students and instructors outside of the class via email. Um, you know, or, or, or Skyping or anything like that. It's really, it makes your uh, online learning and professional development a lot better. And most presenters, by the way, um, enjoy getting email questions after a workshop. They enjoy answering them. Okay, so at this point, what I'm going to do is um, put my money where my mouth is and show you what was, all of the stuff that I've just discussed is what was in my mind when, when I uh, created the Soundtree Institute with, with the other members of the Soundtree staff. 
Um, so we're going we're gonna to dive into it right now. I'm going to come out of this uh, and go back into the meeting center. By the way, while I'm at this um, section, does anybody have any questions? All right, so I'm going to share with you now um, my um, web browser. So you should see your screen go teal again, and then you'll see the Soundtree Institute. By the way, uh, if you have not been to this site yet, we've just added a new feature called Take a Tour. If you click on Take a Tour, there's all types. There's a, a, a video that shows you all about the, the um, Institute. There's a sample webinar, Amy Burns teaching about uh, smart boards. There are all of our upcoming classes uh, that you can check. And you can even click to sample a class. You can go in and try out what an online class looks like. These are our um, 10 hour and graduate level classes. And if you would like to enroll, there it is. But for now, since I'm already a member, um, I'm going to uh, log in. So I'm logged in. And this is what the institute looks like. Uh, the news that is right up here is the latest content that's been added to the site. Um, so you'll see we just put up a lesson plan today. You can click on it and go right to the lesson plan and open up all the materials uh, that go along with it. These lesson plans, by the way, are, are really, really comprehensive and have been written by fantastic music educators. Mike Fine was the time teacher of the year a number of years ago. Great high school uh, music tech and jazz teacher in Pennsylvania. So um, check out those lesson plans. They're way uh, more um, fleshed out than the lesson plans we had on our previous site. Um, there's also a kind of what webinars, what's new content here. So you can say, oh, check out the Finding Funds webinar. And you can also see what upcoming classes there are. So if you're interested in a class, you simply click on Enroll Now. And it brings you uh, to this page. And you say, would you like to enroll in this free course? I say yes, I continue. And so now I've enrolled in the Film Scoring with Mixcraft class that's happening in a couple of weeks. Um, so then to, to go straight through here, there's a courses. These are the upcoming courses. And if you're interested, you can click on it. Here's a course that I'm teaching. You can get the class description. Uh, you can see when it starts. So it's uh, December 7th. This is next Wednesday uh, from 5 to 6 o'clock. It's free. And you can enroll in it by clicking on the green checkbox. We also have classes that are fee-based. Um, they're four-hour classes. So there's a smart board class happening next week. If you're not already registered, it's $99 for four hours. And um, you know, I strongly recommend checking those courses out. And you can see your schedule. So here are all the classes that I'm scheduled to either take, that I've taken in the past, or that I'm actually teaching. So that's kind of a cool uh, thing to see your own personal schedule. And again, you can open it up to see what exactly is being covered in this class and who is the instructor. So that's courses. We'll be adding more and more courses. We're kind of winding down our fall season, and uh, we're going to be ramping up our winter season very shortly. Under the resources, we've got <laughs> quite a few articles. Again, these articles, many of which have been written just for the Institute. Um, are written by great folks. So you can go to, <coughs> here's one by Robin Hodson, uh, notation software, talking about Finale and Sibelius and why you should be considering using them. Um, here's a great one on um, 21st century music advocacy that's written by Stephanie Langle, who's at Berkeley College of Music. Great articles. I would strongly recommend uh, browsing through those. Also, here are all the lesson plans, so you can check out these lesson plans, most of them have been written specifically for the Institute. Some are from our previous site. By the way, if you have questions like what is on this page, you can always click on the question mark and read the description of what, what is actually on this page. So here's one that I wrote called Charlie Chaplin Meets Mr. Foley. You can view the resource and all of the uh, web links and uh, materials that are required are already there. Uh, there's a print resources page. This one doesn't have as many as previous one, uh, but there are a lot of um, Finale and Sibelius uh, quick tips. There's our GEC3 user manual, uh, which a lot of people uh, find really um, uh, helpful that it's there, as well as how to log into our webinars, how to get all the, you know, an instruction page on, on everything that we do when it comes to webinars. Last but not least, we, we put up a couple of links as well as our, our, our um, Twitter feed. 
uh, hopefully you'll find those useful. Under the Connect menu, there is an educator form that we're still building. It will, it will be up very soon. I know it's been saying that for a while, but that'll have all kinds of discussion threads. Um, then there's our Twitter, our Facebook account, our YouTube channel. But this is a page that I really like. It's our support page. Um, so there is a support video that you can watch here, but there's also a live support link. And if you click on this link, if you're using the Institute or if you're an Institute member but need help on a piece of software that you purchased from us, you can click on the live support link and ask our tech support department questions and they can answer them. And if you're on a PC, they can actually take over your computer and help you navigate through the software. Um, that's a PC only uh, option. It's just purely uh, the Mac hasn't been written, or the Mac software hasn't been written for it yet. There's also sales assistance and um, uh, frequently asked questions. So how do I change my password? You click on it, there's exactly how to do it. So that's the support page. We're really proud of that. I think it's great. But the most um, salient thing uh, for you as, uh, as a Soundtree Institute member uh, is, you know, if you attend the live classes by using that courses feature, that's one thing. But if you've missed them, you can always come back here to the media player, click on the appropriate channel. So let's say, um, a music notation software, and then view all of the videos and webinars that we've done on music notation. So here's one that was done recently by Robin Hodson on the in introduction to Sibelius. If we go to music production, here's uh, one on sonar that was done by Jody Underwood, our Southern Accounts Manager. So you can expand this um, uh, to be able uh, to see it full screen. Um, it's I believe these are just great resources, and there's uh, probably over 100 um, videos at this point on our media player. And there are more being added every single week. There's also one little section here called Soundtree Shorts. These are videos that I created. Um, <coughs> they're my little video tutorials. And it's things like how to, um, they're, they're meant to be short, under five minute um, presentations on how to do things with certain software. So that's, uh, in a nutshell, um, the Soundtree Institute. Uh, and, and all of the offerings uh, that are on it. Um, I, when I go back into the presentation, I'll share with you the customization and pricing that we can do with the Institute. But we're really proud of this tool. We've been building it, and every day, and there are a couple of members on the webinar today, every day we're tweaking it, we're adding things. There's a feedback uh, channel so people can say, hey, I don't like this, or I really like this. So we tweak the site literally every single day. Uh, to improve it. So it's getting better and better and better. Um, so I'm going to go back into the meeting center to see, uh, I'll pause for a moment to see if there are any questions at this point. Again, you can just raise your hand. There's a little raise your hand button. Okay, so now that I'm back in the presentation um, or the meeting or the training center, I just wanted to share with you two things. The thing that most teachers are like not so sure about is what about the audio quality? What about, you know, I, I, I can hear you, Jim, over the microphone, but when you play back files, every webinar that I've ever been to in the past, the audio quality is not so great. Well, we found a really wonderful solution I'd like to share with you now. Um, through, the, um, through our training center, we can bring up videos, and I'm going to play this for you, and this will be streamed through your system audio. So I'm going to play you this video, and you can have a listen, see what you think. Compact, convenient, and cutting edge. Nano Series 2. Three unique USB MIDI controllers, each offering an impressive array of features in a durable, portable, and affordable package. Nano series. All right, so that's the video, and what I'm going to do now is share with you an audio file to see the quality of that. So here's a, an audio file of one of our Korg products. Here we go.
Okay, so I was told that uh, my microphone was picking it up, so you probably got a little bit of a delay. So if I mute my microphone, I'm hoping uh, that you were able to hear the uh, audio without that delay. I apologize. Um, but it's really easy for us to share video and audio files. And when I pause it, it pauses for everybody. That's kind of, uh, I think, a great feature of the uh, training center that we have. Um, so with that, I'm going to go back into uh, the presentation uh, and, and continue. I'm almost, uh, I'm almost near the end. Okay, so um, here are the features that I mentioned, but just to go over them again, every single week we do a free webinar and we post tutorials, short little tutorials. That's part of a Soundtree Institute membership. Um, this past October, we did the Meadows Conference. Meadows stands for Music Education and Technology Online Summit, uh, where we had uh, the keynote speaker was Lucy Green from the University of London. And she joined us in the same tool that we're in now. And it was like she was in the same room as us. Uh, and I'm really pleased to announce, and I'm hoping that you can all put this aside on your calendar, on Martin Luther King Day, which is a traditional staff development day, um, we are going to be hosting another Meadows conference. This one focused completely on fostering creativity in the music classroom. Our keynote speaker will be Scott Watson, who is the author of Unlocking Creativity with Technology um, for Music Educators. He's a fantastic resource. And we have four teachers from around the country who will share best practices of how they foster um, creativity in their classrooms. That's going to be on Monday. I believe it's January 21st. It's Martin Luther King Day. Uh, and that is free to any Soundtree Institute member. And if you can't make it during the time that it's held, you can always go back and watch the video later. We also offer four and 10 hour courses. And these are Act 48 approved. So if you're in Pennsylvania, that's Act 48. And for, those, for every other state, these are, um, you can get a certificate from us uh, for professional development hours. And in almost every single state, those certificates qualify as proof of professional development hours. Those courses are fee-based, but they're far more intensive. They're smaller, and you can get a lot out of them. Again, they're very inexpensive when I show you that later. Uh, our graduate courses that we offer are through the University of the Arts, and we um, offer time classes. Every single time course we are offering online uh, for graduate credit. Again, I mentioned the PD hours. Our media player, I think, is great. I spent a, we spent a lot of time coding that to make it easy to use. <clears throat> As I already showed you, the articles, lesson plans, print resources, and links, I believe, are really useful, as well as our online technical support. So now, uh, we've taken the closer look at SoundtreeInstitute.com. Um, let's go into the options. Um, first of all, customized training. If you want any, uh, you name the presenter. If you want them to do a presentation for you or your staff, if you use the Soundtree Institute as the portal, the cost will be a fraction of what it would be to actually send them there. So we work, uh, you know, you, you name the trainer, we'll work with them to use our portal to deliver training. Obviously, we can also do half day, full day, break it up over a number of days, do it, you know, two hours every month um, on a specific software title or hardware device. We uh, at Soundtree can customize any type of training for you at a budget that'll work for you. Um, we also can, and we've, we're doing this for one school district, is we can make a custom time course. Time, if you're not familiar, is the Technology Institute for Music Educators or Education. And they are the kind of um, certifying body for technology in music ed. Just like ORF and Kodai have certifications, TIME is the music technology certification. And we've done this for a school district and say, you know what, we want only our teachers to be in on this TIME course. We can offer it online anytime you want. Um, I love the fact that the course can be at any time during the day. Most of our courses are offered at, during evening hours. So tonight from 7 to 9 p.m., I'm teaching an online time course. And so for the music teachers, that's once a week. It's nine weeks. 
two hours a week. So that's 18 hours of live instruction plus this asynchronous aspect doing the projects and doing the uh, online assignments. So oh, those evening hours are perfect. <clears throat> and this is something that we don't talk about a lot but is an option and I think is mind-blowing. We, we actually have an online computer lab. So what we can do is you can sign out our computer lab remotely. This is a PC only feature, but if you wanted to, um, your staff could learn on software using our computers in our offices in Newark, in, in New York, and say, um, you know, they can log in and try, all right, I want to use Pro Tools. Um, they can try it on our online computer lab. Uh, that's available to you if you're interested. Remote access allows us to control your computers. Um, so if you're having a software configuration problem, you, through the Soundtree Institute, we can help you, um, you know, solve those. And there are online tech support people waiting to do that type of thing. We have breakout rooms. So if you wanted to do a workshop and then for an hour break out into smaller groups, we did that during the Meadows Conference. You can, we can have as many breakout rooms as you want, and they can have their own little private webinars. And at the end of a certain amount of time, we would all go and join back in the main room. Uh, I think that's a great option, and it worked really well at Meadows uh, this past October. So how much does all this cost? Um, it's $49.95 a year for an institute membership, and that gets you all of those features. To me, the 52 hours of webinars that are, that are um, available for PD credit to me is, is more than worth the expense. Um, rather than traveling to a conference. So we do now two online conferences a year, and that $49.95 covers your admission to both of those, as well as all the webinars and resources. Uh, if you want, we do discounts. So if you say, oh, my whole school district wants to, all the music teachers in the district would like a group discount, you can always, um, if you go on the Soundtree Institute um, page, there's a way to contact us. We are more than happy to discuss uh, discounted pricing when you're talking about bulk memberships. Um, the four-hour classes are $99, so it's $25 an hour. And in my my uh, thought process is I challenge you to find any instruction for $25 an hour. It's it's nearly impossible. I know that a half-hour piano lesson nowadays is about 30 bucks for a half an hour. So for four hours, $99, uh, and you don't have to leave your home or travel to do it, I think is a wonderful opportunity, but that's only available to Soundtree Institute members. 10-hour classes, again, use that same model, $25 an hour for a 10-hour class, only with an annual subscription. And our graduate courses, three graduate credits, are, in my opinion, the cheapest available um, from a, a reputable main university. So University of the Arts, it's been around a long time. They're a fantastic uh, university to work with. It's $925 plus their special student fee, which they tack on, makes it a total of under $1,000 for three graduate credits. And again, it's 18 hours of live instruction. And then about, you know, the, the remaining, uh, four, you know, the 22 hours or so is built into the amount of time it takes you to work on the projects and the assignments. So with that, I, I, are there any questions? I'm going to come out of my presentation and go into the meeting center or the training center. Any questions at all? Okay, so as, as it was advertised, if any of you that are on the call today or that are on the webinar, and I can see all of you there, if any of you would like to join the Soundtree Institute as a reward, if you will, for doing so, we'll give you a free four-hour class. So that's $100 uh, worth of instruction if you join the Soundtree Institute. Um, we'd love for you to join the Institute. That, that kind of offer expires uh, end of December. So I'll give you uh, a month to join. So if any of you who are not a member now um, uh, would like to take a free four-hour class just for being on the webinar today, you can do that. And for the one member uh, who is on the webinar today, who uh, I'll give that to you as well, um, a free four-hour class just for being here today. Um, you know, that's, I think, the, the nicest thing we can do for you. 
So hopefully you'll join the Soundtree Institute. If you are an administrator or you know an administrator who you think, hey, you should check this out, please let us know that. We'd be happy to email them um, and send them a copy of this webinar um, because I, you know, the, I firmly believe that this is a, a fantastic way to deliver 21st century professional development at a really affordable cost. I thank you all uh, for joining me today, and I hope you learned something. Uh, and if you have any questions at all, my email address is jimf, J-I-M-F, at soundtree.com, or you can always contact your local Soundtree account manager, uh, almost all of whom are on, the, are on the webinar today. So thank you very much for joining uh, uh, me today, and I'll look forward to seeing you soon, and hopefully you'll become a member. Thank you very much.